Good morning. <clears throat> I am at my mom's in the garage working on this today. We're missing a few of the engine accessories at the moment, and that is because I am putting in a high output alternator, which goes down here in this lower position, and I am rebuilding the power steering pump, which goes up here in this area. So in order to get all that out, the air intake box is out, the ducting, and then I'm also rebuilding the throttle body on this here, 22RE. Um, I am new to this vlogging stuff, so bear with me as I fumble my way through and find some sort of rhythm. I'll fill in more details at a later date on the vehicle itself and the plan for this vlog in general. But as, as it goes, I got a job to do today, so let's get to it. Just wanted to quickly go over some of the materials that I will be using for this alternator install today. So here we have a 250 amp high output alternator that is designed to be a direct bolt in uh, replacement for the 22RE engine. So it's got the lower mount right here, which I have already measured and it is the exact same as the uh, previous one. And then you have your adjusting bolt up here. In doing an upgrade like this, especially going from, I, I don't know what the factory, I think the factory alternator is rated at 60 amps, 70 amps, I don't know, don't quote me. Uh, anyway, I was having issues with uh, charging my second battery system that I have in here, uh, particularly when I was uh, for doing a lot of four wheel drive, uh, you know, low RPM um, kind of stuff. So the, the idea behind this guy is that it will uh, charge at a higher rate uh, when the vehicle is idling or close to idle. Um, so yeah, going from a say 60 amp to a 250 amp, we have to upgrade the wiring. Um, so we've got two gauge here. Um, I went with two gauge because it is a little bit longer of a run. If you see here, alternator position being on the driver's side of the engine, um, but we have our battery over here. Uh, the factory wiring ends up running behind. If you can see this wire loom right here is the uh, charge wire that goes to the positive terminal of the battery. So I may have to remove the radiator to get in there, which it's not a big deal. It's only a few bolts. I've got everything out the fluid wise out of it already. Um, just in order to want to tie everything up nicely because this is going to be uh, pretty important to make sure that I do everything properly. <laughs> I'm no auto mechanic, by the way, so this is not a how-to uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm hoping, hoping I do all this right. I did a bunch of research, so anyway, this is marine grade. Um, all this stuff is really, uh, I went with the highest quality that I could. Um, so marine grade, um, this is not necessarily particularly high quality, but um, wire loom, just uh, an extra added protection. Um, and then some adhesive lined uh, heat shrink tubing and tin lined bra uh, co copper two gauge lugs for the ends of the battery and some or battery cable and some, some 3M <laughs> electrical tape. Quick update, nothing is ever easy. Got the alternator in now. You can see her down there. Only shiny thing in this area of the engine bay. Um, so it's fit, but the factory wiring, uh, this guy, doesn't fit around the post of the new alternator, which wasn't gonna be that big of a problem, but then you look a little closer and there's corrosion on the wire so i just lopped that son of a bitch off and 
going to solder on a new one, get it all nice and new. I trimmed back the wiring a bit past where I saw the last bit of corrosion. So here's the wiring harness that goes to the alternator. So it took off about an inch. Um, I hope I have enough wiggle room in there. I think I'll be okay though. Otherwise I'm gonna have to add wire, I guess. Not ideal, but how it goes. A little progress. We have the new parts installed, new terminal. Um, now looking at this guy, which is um, some sort of ground. Uh, looking at the actual wire, there's a couple points where it's split. I don't know if this is focusing. It's pretty small. Um, anyway, those two areas there and there, the uh, sheathing is split. I don't know if I have another one of the uh, connector this size. It needs to be that big because it actually goes around one of the bolts for the power steering pump uh, mounting bolts rather. Um, so I'm going to try and pull that thing off without damaging it. Um, worst case is I'll have to run to the hardware store or auto store. I'm just trying to avoid that for now. So see if we can not screw it up. New update. Never ending. Decided looking at the actual plug for the alternator. It's now, you can see removed, but the connectors, focus doesn't look great on here, but anyway, the connectors and this part just, I'm in here, I'm replacing it, so yay me. Now I get to wait for this particular piece to arrive, because that's not something I'm going to find easily. I moved on from the plugs because I don't have parts to continue, so I just kept going. I'm just going to keep doing as much as I can before I need to order or run out and get stuff. So what we have complete now is just about everything here has been removed. So the red, you can see that's the start of the terminal where the wire comes around. The air box sits in this general area. So I had to make sure it clears everything. All the zip ties are loose for now, so I have adjustability, but it's all tucked up. The uh, old looking wire loom is the factory wiring. So I ended up pulling the radiator out, made it a lot easier to maneuver around. There's only a few bolts. Um, so we're coming behind there, right around there, and to the positive terminal. We're getting somewhere. So over here, I've just been re-running the new wiring into this setup here, which does not have a lot of room. Barely, barely was able to get that to this red protective cover to stretch over all these wires with the uh, loom on them, make it quite thick. So I still have, let's see, what did I do? I cut a new cable that goes to the starter from the battery. So that's done. And then I have left to do the, I'm going to run a new negative that runs down, I think to the, I don't know which, down to here. Mounts onto the engine block for the ground. I think that'll be all of the new wiring. I ended up having to replace some wiring that I saw some damage to. Um, let's see, what else did I do? Uh, I removed some wiring from the previous owner for uh, front spotlights that was poorly done from the, all the way through. The lights were junk, the wiring was junk, 
it's routed like junk so that's done and then up here this is all these three wires right here are for let's see if i'm getting them these three wires up here there's these are for the dual battery system and i have not had them uh, wrapped in anything so i am going to as tackle that as well get that all cleaned up um, i did notice some a little bit of wear in one of the lines luckily didn't go through the uh, sheathing at all so i think i'm fine without having to replace it i'll just have to go through and really uh, check everything so i think that's about all we got for today five six hours man that's how it goes if you want it done right, it's going to take some time. It is Sunday, April 11th, uh, about a week after the footage you just watched was filmed. I have a lot more footage captured from this past week of me working on the Forerunner. So I think for now, the plan is going to be to try and release one video per week. Maybe more, maybe less. We'll see how things go. The quality will improve over time, uh, not only me with these monologues, but also the uh, video quality and audio quality. This entire week was filmed using my GoPro uh, for a couple reasons. One being that it's a pretty dirty job and the GoPro just makes it so much easier. It also fits into pretty tight nooks and crannies for showing a little bit more detail in the engine bay and whatnot but also because I have a really nice camera. However, I'm much better with it from a photography standpoint. I haven't shot much video on it. I know how to, I just want to, to get started. So I think that's the most important thing. So the GoPro was easy. As mentioned in one of the clips, I will be giving more information about the truck and the overall project. The truck is only a part of the project. So I think I have a lot more information to compile to try and give a decent representation as to what I'm trying to do. For now, I will just give you some information about the basics of the truck itself. It is a 1995 Toyota 4Runner SR5. It has the 22RE four-cylinder engine with a five-speed manual, and it is four-wheel drive. It had automatic disconnecting front hubs from the factory. However, I swapped those out for a set of the manual ACE and locking hubs. You do have to get out of the truck to turn them every time. However, I find that not to be that much of a problem for some of the added benefits that that gives. I've also re-geared to 488 from the original 410 because of the tires being larger than what the factory, what it was released from the factory with. So the 488s are basically set up so that I can go with a 33 inch tire down the road. Right now it has 31s. So the speed speedometer is still off. Along with getting the new gear set, I had the company install a Detroit True Track limited slip in the rear third member. So I figured why not? It wasn't terribly expensive. I think it was an additional 400 or so dollars to have that. The ARB setup was just going to be too expensive. And same with E-Locker uh, from, I think Detroit makes one as well. However, I could have gone another route with a used E-Locker setup from a Tacoma or a similar generation 4Runner, though that requires housing modification. I just wanted it to bolt in because I was doing the, the actual install of the third member. The gear set and everything was set up by East Coast Gear Supply, but I, I actually did the install. So I didn't want to go too crazy with grinding the housing and, and whatnot. So I had, uh, when I was doing that job, I was stuck outside working on it in Portland while it was raining. I wanted it done quick, needless to say. Mostly the truck is stock. I've gone through a bunch of systems and replaced wearable components. I try as much as possible to go with OEM, genuine Toyota parts wherever I can. 
and as much as I can afford it, it isn't the cheapest option in the world. And they also don't still, they don't sell all parts for these older vehicles. This thing's 26 years old now. With that said, it, uh, it does have Moog heavy duty springs in the rear. They're okay, but eventually I will be lifting it and going with most likely the OME, Old Man Emu setup. And I just need to figure out which spring option I want to go for for the rear because they have a couple, I think two options, a heavier duty one if you're carrying a lot of weight all the time. So I'll probably go with that route. However, I've heard it's pretty harsh if you drive it unloaded. So I want to make sure that I'm at least carrying an additional 300 pounds at all times if I'm going to be going that route. I think that about wraps up the video for this week. I've got so much more information and things coming, but I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is. So again, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll maybe see you again next week.